Our guest today is Dr. Abu Nassar. He is in private practice here in San Diego. He's board certified in geriatric medicine, internal medicine, palliative care medicine, anti-aging medicine, and holistic medicine. So welcome and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. You know, it's good to be here. You know, you guys might think I've got multiple personalities, <laughs> that. but you know, like, you know, I have got, I take tremendous fun in dealing with all aspects of medicine, by the way. And Dr. Nasser, we want to lead off with the topic of holistic health and healing, and you use the term random use of pharmaceuticals. And Patty and I are very passionate about that too many people are overusing medication, and what do we do about it? So what do you mean by that term, random use of pharmaceuticals? Yeah, strangely, indeed, you know, we are an overdosed and overdrugged nation. Like we comprise less than 5% of the world population. We consume more than 50% of the world's statins, cholesterol lowering drugs. We consume more than 50% of the SSRIs or antidepressants. So what I describe as profligate use of pharmaceuticals, we are not necessarily healthier than many other nations which are using drugs more cautiously and pragmatically. Looking at our senior population, strangely indeed, that they are on 14 plus different types of medications. I can and attest to that. And if you look at that scenario on seniors, according to the chairman of geriatric medicine from Harvard, if you are on eight or more medications, your chances of having an adverse drug reaction is 100%. So looking at it in a global perspective, we see the increase of adverse drug reactions and events. And we also call it potentially inappropriate medications. In this country, Ron, if we are spending $1 on drugs, we are spending $1.33 on adverse drug reactions. So this is how sad the situation is. So before we get into the next Patty's question on brain health, I want to really dig a little deeper on that because this is something that's really passionate to both Patty and I because mm -hmm. both our parents, parents have, were afflicted, we've experienced it, experienced <laughs> right. it ourselves. And as I always say, my, my dad passed away earlier this year, but he had a pillbox the size of Texas, mm -hmm. and who knew what was going on, right? So how do we fight it? We have the farmers, and again, I, we want to get political or not, but the pharmaceutical companies are advertising billions of dollars on television. And then they say the adverse effects are possible death when they, you know, when they advertise. Mm -hmm. And then you go to the doctor, and the doctor doesn't, most doctors, you know, mm -hmm. really just say, okay, well, here, here's the pill. What do we do? How do we, how do we fight this? Or how, not, I hate to use the word fight. How do we combat it, I guess? Well, that's a, it needs multi-concerted approach, Rod. Let me explain to you that in our culture, it has been very much ingrained and instilled that there is a pill to every ill. Mm -hmm. That concept has to go. You know, we have to look at nature. You know, we have to look at balancing our life. You know, we have to look at other supplements. We have to look at relationships. You know, we have to look at spirituality. We have to look at other nature's ways to combat most of these chronic disease conditions. I'll be very frank with you, nature, has every medicine in our cabinet. All we have got to do is to use it. Amen. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. So you talk about brain health and how, how do you incorporate that into your practice? Right, you know, if you look historically, you know, there has been quite a few drugs out in the market, which has been quite ineffective. And there is no silver bullet looming on the horizon. And I'll be very candid with you. So we have to resort back to diet, lifestyle, exercise, and hormones. One of the most fascinating areas of neuroscience and uh, brain health research is mental aerobics. Now, this is a term which has been coined by neuroscientists that mental stimulation can actually build up more connections into your brain cells. We call it synaptogenesis. The more stimulation you do and have, the more mental aerobic exercises you engage into, the more connections you develop, and the more brain cells you can lose over time, you can afford to. So this is a process, we call it neuroredundancy. That means with 
you know, Sudoku puzzles, with positive relationships, with yoga meditation, with positive mental exercises, we can develop more and more brain cells. We call it neurogenesis. And obviously, synaptogenesis, that means more connections. There is a neuropeptide. We describe it as brain-derived neurotropic factor, or BDNF. That is like the fertilizer that can get your brain cells to grow and connect themselves together. That's what happens to me when I run, and the endorphins kick in. Absolutely. You know, like people. I don't listen to music. I don't do anything. I just run. <laughs> That's a very <laughs> positive thing. Even people who engage themselves in listening to these kind of programs, they are going to build up brain cells, and they are going to build up more connections. So mental exercise and aerobic exercises is crucial to brain health. Well, let's, I'm going to take, a, again, a little different a logistic approach. When someone comes into your office for an appointment or you meet someone at a, who's living at a senior community, is your approach to them saying, let's get out, let's see what you're doing? I mean, what is, how does the process work for you in terms of, because you are fighting their 30 years with Dr. X, Y, or Z, I, I assume. So mm -hmm. you're working that, working, helping them remove themselves from that? The first foremost thing, Ron, is to get the patients away from the inciting stimulus, the stimulus that causing more harm. So I call it a mental, physical, and spiritual detox. That's the first thing. The first thing you do if there is fire, you want to stop that fire first. And then you treat that patient who is caught in the fire. So that's our foremost step. And then what we do is we try to supplement their life and their diet with proper supplements and try to get them to an environment which is conducive to their mental, emotional, and spiritual health. And again, so in terms of the three, the question of three main points when it comes to living the highest and best quality of life, what would you, how would you answer that? Actually, number one that dawns in my mind is stress reduction. Stress is the ultimate killer. You know, stress promotes cortisol, which is like battery acid to our body, and actually that curbs longevity. The second most important thing, which is actually ignored in our culture, is relationships. Positive relationships is the most crucial element to longevity, good health, and inner peace. You know, like that's what is described by the Nobel laureate, Professor Yunus from Bangladesh, the social capital. The social capital is the social glue that keeps the community together and help us propel forward. And finally, you know, if you ask me the last uh, uh, point, which I would say that it's actually, you know, proper sleep, you know, proper supplementations, you know, those are things which is very crucial for our mental, physical, and emotional health. So you have a positive approach to longevity and regeneration and rejuvenating and healing. And how do you incorporate all that into your practice? So, Patty, that's a very interesting question, which is very comprehensive. And that what entails to what we describe as the holistic approach to health and wellness. That not only includes like a proper diet and lifestyle, but what we try to adopt and uh, incorporate into our patients' lifestyles is spirituality. You know, spirituality is very important. According to the Jerusalem Longitudinal Study, we know that in Israel, you know, like uh, folks who are actually spiritually driven, they live longer and they have happier lives. You know, you can actually incorporate into any religious groups and you'll find the same answer. The other element which is very important is like we described as stress reduction. Stress reduction entails a very well coordinated and well orchestrated approach. That means, you know, what we try to do is to add vitality. The way we can add vitality is, you know, ensuring that, you know, we have positive relationships, you know, we avoid things which are stressful to our lives. And most important thing I call R on T phenomena which is relationships over task. You know, like mm. our, we are every day inundated with work, 
job commitments, but we have to define ourselves who we are. And the way we can describe ourselves best is how we deal with others as human beings. And I, I just am so, I just hope that we don't just, seniors are not just watching this show, that the whole world is watching this show. Because this is so important, whether you're 10 years old, 40 years old, or 100 years old, mm -hmm. this is all what we need to know uh, in terms of healthy lifestyles. I mean, they're giving as many drugs to 10 and 12 year olds today, today because the kid does one odd thing and they hear, here, takes a drug and they think they must, he has, what is it, they, ADHD, ADHD, whatever it is. And maybe the kid just needs to get out and exercise a little bit. Not only that, what they need is the most important thing is time quality and quantity time from their parents, from the siblings, from the grandparents, and their cousins and relatives. Well, Dr. Instead of video games. Instead of video games. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Dr. Booth, thank you so much for coming on set today and telling your story about your practice and your passion for your work. And I really hope that we get millions of people can view your message because it is so important for a healthy and longevity and a healthy and quality of life lifestyle. So we really appreciate you coming on today. Thank you. So stick around for more Senior Stay or Go.